Thursday morning newspapers with the former editor of the Daily Star, Dawn Neeson, and the journalist and broadcaster, Mike Parry. Very warm welcome to you both. Thanks for coming in bright and early. Uh, Dawn, let's start with the front of the mirror this morning at the petrol crisis. It's just unbelievable. And to think that we're not even at the peak, as the RAC are warning. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting morning for all the newspapers. None of them really agreeing on what the splash is. A couple of similar things on the front. And the mirror is just, I mean, if you want to cheer yourself up, don't buy the mirror this morning. Okay. Great paper, but don't buy it. It's not exactly cheerful. £100 to fill your family car. And we're not talking, you know, the, the super duper cars here. We're talking an ordinary family car. So 2p rise is the biggest jump in 17 years from the cost of our um, petrol. So a 55 litre tank, and I, I think I don't drive, unfortunately, not for a long time. That's, but that's uh, an, uh, an average car. Yeah, well, it's actually a pretty small tank. It is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there About you go. 70 litres normally, isn't it? For uh, a yeah. decent sized car. Yeah. There you go. So, and that is now £99.40 today at most pumps. But the RA say, say it will go up again today and possibly over that £100. What, why, why are we seeing, does it tell us why we're seeing a big jump in the last 24 hours? Well, I mean, it's, it, well, this is the thing. I mean, it's the main reason for the jump in oil, is it the jump in oil prices. But why is it this 24 hours? And I've, I've gone through it all and I'm still it's trying... It's about deliveries. It, the, the it, deliveries it's but... about deliveries and, and the rate at which they come to this country. And the other thing is, China have only got to up their demand by 1% for the whole price of petrol around the world to go up because, a, for instance, a tanker which is heading to Europe, we're heading here, suddenly the Chinese offer a bit more money for it. It turns yeah. around and it goes to China. But the thing is, Mike, the, mm -hmm. the fuel they're selling now yep. in the garage forecast, they've had in their storage tanks yeah. for, for days. I, I know, Wait, but, but, but... So they, why are they selling that in their price? Because yeah. the industry exists on futures. Yeah. And, they, and they price it all in because it's going to cost more and, and they don't want to get caught out losing money. The other thing, Mike, mm. is that, you know, the chance of this 5p fuel duty and, you yeah. know, meant to see the prices immediately yeah. at the pump, the price is going, and they never did. Yeah. Our local garage, on the very day this was announced, put their price up yeah. by 5p. It, it, it is an utter disgrace, that. I mean, if the Chancellor really wants to help, he could cut VAT on petrol and diesel, says one expert. That is absolutely true, because every time the price of a litre of petrol goes up, the take that the government get goes up as well, percentage-wise, of the VAT. It's a scandal. Nearly 35% yeah. of what you pay is on fuel duty. Absolutely. 16% on VAT. Absolutely. Those two are and, and the government have the, the immediate ability to slash that and make it easier for the motorist, OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, th well, they they do. It, that would mean a very big hit in the coffers. Would we make it up in terms of increased usage and getting about more and, and they're giving people money away everywhere else, aren't they? they? I mean, Rishi Sunak must have a plan. I'm reading every day that oh, government revenues are up. Rishi's got a bit more money to play with. Well, help the motorists here. There's one line here which I object to. For many people, driving a car is not a luxury but a necessity. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Also. But it should also not be prohibitive to be a luxury. Mm. People who've got two homes, for instance, want to go from one to the other, is that a luxury or a necessity? Mm. You know, you shouldn't feel that you're a bad person because you're, you're driving for social and domestic purposes, not business. Well, also, it doesn't just affect Joe you know, Public, does it? It's the HGV drivers, it's the farmers, and, and that course. also then has a knock-on in terms of the cost of Taxi goods drivers. And, and food. Exactly. Yeah. You have to earn, so earn their living. You it's know? all so, bad. Yeah, the cost got, of farm, if, if you're a farmer... Uh, what's the price of red diesel at the minute? Mm. I just know, I don't, because obviously that's a lot. It's a lot cheaper. Red diesel is an awful lot cheaper. Mm. Half, half the duty mm. isn't on it, but even so, it's still be going mm. on. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Which is going to affect you. Um, um, so, yeah. at, uh, cause I say, because of the whole cost of living thing, Archie yeah. has been in touch this morning. Says, given that people are suffering just now, why are they not talking about green taxes on our bills? That would mm. take twenty five percent off in one go. Uh, every mm. time I talk about fuel bills, and we've just had another one in, and it's like twenty five percent because we're a dual fuel, a, a, a single fuel electric, 25% it's on V8, uh, the green levies. Yeah. Why not take that off? Just as a short-term measure. Yeah, you know, not forever, just for now. Oh, I'd make it a long-term measure. I, th I think it's a racket and a scandal that started with Gordon Brown, really, every time he needs to raise a bit more money. I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll yeah. protect the environment... Uh, we'll stop people flying, introduce a green tax. It was just just a, a racket to give the it, government it is, more money. It's, it's not really working. No. It's still all going to burn in hell next week or something. Like and I'd love to know where they divert that money to in terms of helping the, the environment. You, you know, you don't see them planting trees all the time, do you? The money <laughs> no. they've got. Well, no. Yeah. Well, in, ter in terms of that cost of living, Mike, yeah. in, in the Express, the... Yes. 
Uh, the PM is going to make some uh, supposedly pretty bold promises today. Well, this, this amuses me a bit because they've leaked, the government of number 10 have leaked this speech that uh, Mr Johnson's going to make today. And he's going to say, we have the tools, we need to get on top of rising prices. The global headwinds are strong, but our engines are stronger. And while it's not going to be quick or easy, you can be confident that things will get better. Hang on, Boris, you say, we have the tools we need to get on top of rising prices. Use them. Because we're all suffering. We're all suffering terrible hardship with prices going up all over the place. Our so stop blathering and start doing something. Well, our engines aren't stronger. We can't afford the fuel. We can't. Exactly. No, no. There was another yeah. joke in there, but I'm not going down that. Um, well, one of the tools that yeah. he is going to outline today is possibly to help people with the housing crisis, Dawn. And you've got this on the front of the Times, that this right to buy Thatcherite policy, mm. making a bit of a comeback. It's been heavily trailed. Um, what, what's the Times' take on it? Right, OK. Well, this is uh, lower paid workers will be able to use their housing benefits to buy homes under plans to be announced today in the speech that's been very, very heavily leaked, it has to be said. And, and as you say, Isabel, this is actually channeling his inner Margaret Thatcher. He's actually turning the clock back to helping homeowners, youngsters buy their homes. I mean, we have this only 34% of 20 to 34-year-olds can actually own their own home these days. And what we are, what they are suggesting today is that our, um, going back to being Thatcher, cutting taxes, helping businesses grow, and giving people money to spend, and helping people own their own homes. And the other thing to do with this story is that they are going to uh, Michael Gove, the Leveling Up Secretary, has said that it's secured an agreement that every social housing home that is made easier for people to buy proper Thatcher is going to be replaced by another one now, so we don't run down that housing stock. Because mm. the thing is, do we have enough homes to do this with? That's all well and good, but what I don't understand from this, what makes me a little bit uncomfortable... Is it considering that you know we're, we're yeah. paying so much money in in taxes and things yes. because of, to, to keep benefits going? Yes. Is is this is all about allowing people to use benefits? To use so, benefits. Government, so our yeah. money. Yeah. yeah. To pay their mortgage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's not a good investment. If you're being given benefit know. money and you put it into bricks and mortar, you are actually investing it very wisely. I, I mean, like you, I well, guess. But, but 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 we don't. Yeah. Like the people whose money it, it ultimately has is. Where, yes. where, aren't getting any return from that, are they? Well, the return will come in future generations, you right. know what I mean? Yeah. Because oh, housing, right. housing values over the long term always go up, they don't go down. Yeah. So it's better than using that welfare money down the pub or the betting shop or buying cigarettes. If you put it into property, you know that you've actually invested it. And Dawes made a great point here. Michael Gove says that for every house we sell, we'll replace with another one, social housing. That, of course, was the damage done by the Thatcher scheme, we ended up with no council There's houses. Yeah, that's how how are they going to replace you know? it with, with new... So we, we've not got enough stock as it is. You know so what, they are going to magic up this social they, housing? They have to give they... more tax advantages and benefits to commercial builders. builders. You know, we've got a very efficient private housing mm. uh, construction industry in this country. And a tweak here and a tweak there with allowances on land and all that kind of stuff, you can get houses built more quickly. But, but it's all down to the private sector. This is, this is exactly what this is about isn't it? And this is the whole speech today that Boris is going to make is about basically the Tories going back to being yeah. Tories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which is well, we hope they so. Have any chance of saving their skins? That's exactly what they yeah. need to do. Cutting taxes, helping the business grow, driving the economy, and that mm. is what this is part of. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, Mike. Yes. Uh, another controversial issue yeah. in, in the mail this morning: the Rwanda flights. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, the, the first one's going to be grounded by the lawyers. Well, this was always going to happen, wasn't it? We knew yeah. this. E even when Priti Patel announced her policy, she said, "I anticipate that a group of lefty lawyers." She was quite dismissive about them. She didn't show them much respect. A group of lefty lawyers will get together and try to stop this issue. Now, I love the way the Mail have done this story this morning. Lawyers set to ground first Rwanda flight. Um, they say on their, on their front page piece here, they say there is still a chance, albeit a low chance, that it will happen, i.e. the flight will go. Uh, it's still on until a judge decides otherwise. The problem is, we know in this country now, don't we, that right across the judicial system, there is a... Left-wing persuasion. We've seen it when the decisions on Brexit were taken to court and all of a sudden the judges sided with the Remainers. We've seen it happen. And people will say, where's your evidence? I get the feeling there is a left-wing influence that has seeped into the legal profession. So I love the way the Mail have done this story because what they've got is they've got a chap called Dr Rakib Isan, who is a community relations expert, who points out all the advantages 
of the Rwandan uh, situation. The ability of an independent country to control its borders is one of the basic benchmarks of a functioning government. And he goes on to say it's innovative and pragmatic. The reaction of the left is depressing and predictable. Isn't it right, though, in a civilised society that yes. people can legally challenge a position? Of course it is. But the problem is that if it's done for reasons other than the specific issue. It's a challenge against the government's authority. We know that because if you look at the groups that have got together to fund the campaign against the um, uh, people being sent to Rwanda, you, you'll see that very few of them are actually directly involved in immigration policies. You see what I mean? And, and they all come together. But the, the question I always ask here, whenever this comes up and people say, we're going to court, we're going to stop it, what is your alternative? We have never had anybody since the Rwanda uh, policy was introduced, who's come up with a credible alternative? So maybe there 10, isn't 10,000 people this, this year already is as many as came in the whole of last year. But maybe, maybe there isn't one. And, you know, maybe don't forget isn't. how expensive this is going to be for the taxpayer. Hugely yes. costly. And 7 out of 10 of those people who will be sent to Rwanda will then be allowed legally to, to return. Yeah. So what a huge waste well, of money. Well, well, we're just hoping it's a deterrent, aren't we? We're hoping that people yeah. who give £5,000 mm. to a people smuggler in Calais will now think twice and say, crikey, I could be on a plane flying over the top to Rwanda by the time so I get there. These are young men that we are... Supporting. All young men. All young men. A report, sorry, Don, a report from Hull this morning. One hotel in Hull has been taken over by the local authority to house immigrants. Every single occupant of that hotel in Hull is a young male. Absolutely. I want to know what's happening to the women and the children of the young men that are coming over across the channel. Where are they? They're not making it over. No. So all these lawyers who are busy fighting these claims for these young men, mm. what, what, why are they not fighting for the women and the children and especially these yes. girls that are left behind? Yes. No, I totally agree with that. I totally agree. What support are they getting and where are they? Uh, right. Yeah. Mm. Um, Dawn, let's, yes, have at, let's have a look at rail strikes. Shall we oh, just cheer us up this morning? Shall we cheer ourselves up right, with some rail I strikes? Mm. Well, this is the front page of the eye, which really, uh, I mean, it is like free razor blade for every reader this morning. <laughs> I mean, it's like, uh, it, well, I'm not even going to read the subject out of subject with a little bit. Of something. It's just listing where we are at the moment. I mean, the rail strike passengers face six days shut down, something mm. we sort of knew. Um, but it, it is going ahead, and as we've discussed this morning, with petrol prices increasing, we can't afford to drive. Flying is in chaos. We can't fly anywhere. Hmm. Now we can't get a train anywhere. What, are they, what yep. are they complaining about this time? Because obviously, the, I mean, the industry itself is just getting back on its feet. Hmm. Well, this is the the the, 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 the <laughs> what they want is they want guaranteed our um, wage increases in, linked with inflation, no job losses, and and, and that's basically. But, but bear in mind, I mean, the pandemic has really changed travel habits. Twenty five percent fewer ticket sales, um, and, and we also taxpayers kept the railways running at £16 billion yeah. pound cost to us, yeah. which was £600 pound per household during the pandemic. Wow. Um, and the industry now has been asked to pay back £2 billion of that. And money has to be saved from somewhere. And the union yeah. and the government need to actually sit down and sort this out yeah. because once again it's the ordinary people the taxpayers yeah. that have already paid that are suffering I, 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 go on. i'm sorry i'd appeal to the rail workers themselves and look back and see what happened to the coal mining industry okay mm -hmm. the coal mining industry tried to take on the thatcher government on a purely political basis to get rid of them and by the time Mrs. Thatcher stepped down, there wasn't a coal mining industry. It literally disappeared. And the be because it became yeah. cost ineffective and they said we can get it elsewhere. Yeah. Now, I'm not, I'm sorry, you know, I'm not saying that we can travel on things other than trains, right? But we don't need as many trains now, as you pointed out, that well, we, did, we, we did a long time we ago. We don't always need people to drive them or to, nope. to, 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 to manage the gates. Yes. Quite and right. A point that was made to us yesterday on this programme was that as there is such low unemployment at the moment, actually the rights of workers, the balance is in their favour at the moment. Mm. We could probably see the return mm. of unions, of strikes right across the board, oh, to something else to really absolutely. look forward to. I mean, the thing is, the average rail salary in the UK, I know we are talking about not just the drivers who are on over £50,000, but the average our salary in the UK is £45,472 per annum. The average nurse is on £31,000. Yeah. And the average care home worker, which includes one of my friends, is on £20,000. Mm. Mm. And drivers get up to £60,000 mm -hmm. for driving trains in this country. 60000 quid. Mm. 
for a train driver. Not bad, is it? And I saw uh, lots of people claiming that wasn't the case. I mean, if you're a train driver and 60 grand, let us know. We hear these figures mm. banded yeah, around yeah, sure, and there's yeah. so much response yeah. saying, I don't get that. So yeah. that, what's, what's the true picture in terms of what you're yeah. paid as, as a train driver? 60 well, grand well, does seem a lot. Mick Lynch, who is the leader of um, the people who work on the trains, he gets 124,000. Now, I don't begrudge him that. He's the head of a big union and he's got to look after his members' interests and therefore they think he's the best man for the job. But he won't be suffering the sort of pain other people are suffering with a salary like that and a £900,000 house. So, you know, I think you've got to get that into perspective. I bet he can afford yeah. to fill his car up. I bet, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's have a look at Siggy's in oh, the yeah. Times. Oh, yeah. What do you think about yeah. this, Mike? No, I don't like anything that got the word ban in it, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I think people should be free to do what they like. Cigarettes are such a, an interesting thing because they're not illegal, but of course they're seen, they're, they're, they're deemed to be the most unhealthy pursuit you can have in life. I'm a very lucky smoker. I can go out for a lunch with a few friends, a few Fleet Street friends, like Dawn Neeson or something like that, right? Uh. Have an old-fashioned Fleet Street lunch and then have a few cigarettes afterwards in the afternoon and then not smoke again for probably two months because I'm, I'm not that's, addicted that's to nicotine. Very you know what I mean? it, it, it's very unusual, but it, 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 it helps. Now, the problem is what I hate about this is it's based on the New Zealand scheme. New Zealand has become a basket case country, you know, COVID lockdowns and all that kind of stuff, where they're going to try and force everybody out of smoking by this system that anyone born after 2008 would never be able to buy cigarettes legally. Well, I don't want to see a wholesale ban in this country. Make it more difficult, put the prices up if you want, put the age of smoking up to 21. But surely you can't ban it wholesale, we, we, well, you? It was tried with prohibition, wasn't it, with yes. alcohol, and look yes. what happened. You have a huge black market, you have illegal cigarettes flooding the market, mm. which we all know have all sorts of nasty chemicals in them. Yeah, we'll, yes, we'll, fewer yeah. people are smoking them. Yeah, no, look, my dad died of lung cancer, Steve, and I, I totally agree. I think we should increase mm. the cost of cigarettes, but I mean, I think that I'm agreeing with Mike on this. Banning them is... is Banning makes me it's totalitarian. It's, where one of it's one of the few things in life, yeah. smoking, yeah. where there are no benefits. I mean, drinking, you can say, well, you know, it's social, you have a nice time, you relax yeah. a bit. Yeah. I mean, even you know, when they talk about legalizing certain drugs, people can say, well, it makes me feel better, whatever yeah. else. Um, well, some people smoke of because that. of their nerves. You know, they find it impossible to get through the day without 40 fags or well, something like that. Well, that's because they've got used to it, though. Well, well yeah, I suppose so. But again, with yeah, Dawn, it's just pure. Really bad for it. Yeah, but if it's available in a free society, it shouldn't be what banned. What exactly? I mean, what about high-calorie foods or fast yeah. food? I mean, what are the advantages of that provides, other than it's just bad for you? But it does mm. still provide an element of nutrition that we uh, do but have but to, they do used, have to they eat. used to prescribe uh, cigarettes for pregnant women, didn't they? If you were very stressed <laughs> out, it would like, have a cigarette to calm down. I mean, that, that's <laughs> within, you know, my so mum's mom's generation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, as, a, as, a, as an ex-smoker, mm. I just think... I, mean, I understand the freedoms argument. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do. And I had a cigar at my wedding and all the rest of it was all very nice. Yeah. Um, but you, you got the cigar? Of, but you do, sort of, you do yeah. sort of think... Mm. You know, yeah. really, if you can well, st if you can stop people ever getting on the on the bandwagon, yeah. no, and they're gonna, they're thank you for it. I think the like government's done a very good job. It says about fifteen percent of adults now smoke, and that you want to get that down to five percent. I'm certain when I was a young man, fifty percent of this oh, country smoked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So their policy to reduce smoking is working, mm. and I would say just keep doing that, you know? And it yeah. increased by 25% during the pandemic amongst youngsters. Did it? I was surprised when wow. more youngsters started smoking during yeah. the pandemic. 25% that was up. Yeah. Why, I wonder what's that? Nothing awesome. else to do. Nothing else to do. <laughs> yeah. Order, no absolutely. Pub. Get a packet of fags. Well, yeah. um, look, let us know your views at home on all the subjects we've been talking about in the paper review. Uh, Dawn and Mike will be back in the next hour to take us through another newspaper review, but